in order that the race might live and grow. Look at my face, dark as the night, yet shining like the sun with love's true light. I am the child they stole from the sand 300 years ago in Africa's land. I am the dark girl who crossed that wide red sea, carrying in my body the sea of the free. I am the woman who worked in the field, bringing the cotton and the corn to yield. I am the one who labored as a slave, beaten and mistreated for the work that I gave. Children sold away from me, husbands sold too. No safety, no love, no respect was I due. 300 years in the deepest south, but God put a song and a prayer in my mouth. God put a dream like a steel in my soul. Now through my children, I am reaching the goal. Now through my children, young and free, I realize the blessings denied to me. I couldn't read then, I couldn't write. I had nothing back there in, in the night. Sometimes the valley was filled with tears but I kept trudging on through the lonely years. Sometimes the road was hot with the sun, but I had to keep on till my work was done. I had to keep on, no stopping for me. I was the seed of the coming free. I nourished the dream that no, nothing could smother deep in my breast, the Negro mother. I had only hope then but now through you, dark ones of today, my dreams must come true. All you dark children in the world out there, remember my sweat, my pain and my despair. Remember my years, heavy with sorrow, and make of those years a torch for tomorrow. Make of my past a road to the light, out of the darkness, the ignorance, the night. Lift high my banner out of the dust. Stand like free men supporting my trust. Believe in the right, let none push you back. Remember the whip and the slaver's trap. Remember how the strong in struggle and strife still bar you the way and deny you life. But march forever forward, breaking down bars. Look ever upward in the sun and the stars. Oh my dark children, may, may, may my dreams and my prayers impel you forever up and great stairs. For I will be with you till no white brother dare keep, keep down, down the children of the Negro mother.
you have to raise your hand. If you were here yesterday and you remember one of the inventions, then you look for it. We get up every morning, we go to work, we search up money. Everything we do in life we, is about money. Sometimes we never say, how about God? If we wake up every day and call God's name as much as we call money, we would be much richer, I think. But we always say, it's money that we want, it's money that I'm about, it's money I need, it's money I'm looking for. So, well, today I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a little money. Not a lot. Not a lot, but if you remember yesterday, one invention, or even the name of the inventor, then you can come to this special camp. Can we learn? Anyone remember any invention from yesterday? The one we invented, the plasma. The blood plasma. Yes. Wow, okay, you're correct. His name was Drew. Yes. Yes, his name is Drew. Wow, uh, I don't remember his first name, but yes. Okay. Oh, teacher, you all, you were the first one yesterday, teacher. Come on. Okay, put your hand in here and take something out. Don't look at it, just put your hand out. Get one.
So when you shift the car in the gear, it's the transmission up here. He also invented that. Uh, the light bulb. The light bulb was invented by a Louis Latimer. But at the time he invented it, of course, it, he was enslaved and he was working with around the white man. Okay, so they were together working, but the white man got the benefits for, for inventing it. He only got it, the benefit for doing the filament in it, that little diggy line inside the light bulb. So, uh, okay, this is the last one. I have many more, but this is the last one. This is called about the fiber optics. Who knows what a fiber optic is? Okay, can you describe what it is? It is a, a small glass tube, very thin, that light will transfer through. Right. It. And it's used for what? It's used for telecommunications. Correct. Invented by Dr. Shirley Jackson, a black woman. Yes, sir. Oh, the language. Yes. Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. Okay, that's why it would be nice for me to have translator. You know, because I don't have a blackboard. I don't have a blackboard. <laughs> okay, so, okay. Slow down. Slow down. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. It's not a book that you sit, you have to, it's like a study book. 
that you study. So it tells you what happened to Africa. What was it that happened that caused Africa to be begging the world for help when it's the richest continent in the world is Africa. The very richest continent in the world. So this is the second book. Capital, capitalism and slavery. This was written by Eric, well, Dr. Eric Williams. He was the Prime Minister of Trinidad Tobago from 1961 till 1981 when he died. But in 19, early 1940s, he wrote and researched very well how Europe, England, America, Germany, Italy, France, Belgium, all of them, how they got rich from the land of Africa. Especially during the, the slavery time. Because in order to make shackles, they needed industries. Those industries were built up in Europe. They built a big building and shackles because they know they're going to have to have many for all the enslaved people they were going to take. They also knew that they're going to need ships. All of these things create money. And even the bodies of the people they took across the sea, they had insurance companies. That if they lose too many people, insurance will pay. So once you know those two books, it's just going to start your wheel turning, especially you young people. Because long after I'm gone, you're still going to have to do the work. So this one says, once you know what has happened, how do you fix it? So Chancellor Williams says, the rebirth of African civilization was well written. It described how the people and the leaders should react, how they should come together. As a matter of fact, in the last chapter of the book, it tells you the rules. The fundamental rights of African people drawn from African traditional, constitutional, and customary law. So at the end, you can come and look at it. So, um, Yesterday I told you of a friend that I knew. His name is Early Laverne. I read his poem. The reason why I am motivated to do my YouTube show, here is, here is my YouTube, the title of my YouTube show. Let's talk and grow with Ms. Roshumba. I thought it was important for me to have a show to connect with people that are needing to hear some things that maybe they don't get to hear on a daily basis. He is the inspiration behind it. What is this? Yes. So, so his name is Mr. Early Laverne. He was a poet. And he was a poet. And I read one of his poems yesterday. I think I did. But if not, I will read one at the end. I'm going to ask this gentleman to because when we finish the video, we're gonna be a little bit more hyped up. So, sister, she's gonna read one, and you're gonna read one, then we'll start the video. Let her start her. And don't forget your page. This is from a book by James Baldwin. Come on up here, Sister Veronica. Hey, you all know Sister Veronica. Not everything that is faced can be changed. 
nothing can be changed until it is faced. But nothing can be changed until it is faced. But unless we share, I said I'm going to so if you if you don't face it, nothing will happen. You must face it. And then it will change it. If not in your time, in your children's time. You cannot run. Okay, so mine is uh, in order to have a conversation with someone, you must reveal yourself. You must reveal yourself. I said, I want to make a big I want to. I was so much in my way. Okay, is 
taller than the black grain, the white man knows this and is afraid. In America, blacks invented the biggest of all bombers, but they are still kept in big glass prisons, like slaves. Hannibal was the white man's master. He gave him the signs used for writing. Hannibal also gave him the wheel, which Hannibal had invented. But when he brought it to the white king, the king killed him and ate him. Because they wanted to become black, whites lie in the sun by the sea.
what they were doing with it. The, the yesterday one was showing when they took out the African. That one was very awful. I think that's why you came back tonight, because you wonder what else. So today it was a little easier to come. So um, we're going to end it here tonight. And if you want, we can have a conversation. I want you to stop. If you want to talk about it, anything in there that made you feel like you're saying something? I know you have a question, Sheldon. No question. Uh, anybody you want to say anything? Oh, Sorry. Go ahead. I want to do because it's sad. It's sad about one of the epidemic. I don't know where when there's a mistake with that. Stop a little louder. Talk so everyone can hear you. Oh, I want to talk to the head. Ask the arrest. Yes. Yes. To the place we do know. So, you, if you don't know where you come, let them. Then you know, say, you know that the teachers this will be all the same. Blacks are still going through the same thing, unless we borrow from them. Yes. Is that what, is that yes. what you are trying to say? Okay, and so I, I always come back to the word knowledge of self. We must know what happened. Because when we know what happened, we could fix it. Maybe not in our time, but in maybe in the children's time. You already been telling us. Yeah. So, how do you Unless think? the kid can be inside. Unless they come inside. Now that we, we, we still pull. Yeah. So you told me this. What's it, what she's trying to say is who now would have to change how we see the situation at the moment. I can't hear you, sir. I said in that time, in that olden time, the technology was not common. Yes. So right now we are in Oh, my God. 
God. And that is never, that, is, that will never go out of, uh, out of uh, style. If you stand with truth, you will always win. But the thing that I always remember is this. This body will one day go. But when something happens and this body goes, the next one will come to take it. But you must continue to plan. Kwame Nkrumah started something. And after he left, it's like people just went back to the habit. Because we tell you, black people have skills. African people are very skilled, though. They're very skilled. People come here to watch when they go to China and replicate it and sell it to America. So you have to believe your value. And the first thing to remember always, if you're the first that was born to your mother, you're special. If you're the first to invent the traffic light, you're special. Anybody that's the first is special. African people, the world knows, the first in creation is African people. So if you're the first that God created, you're special with what was right. And when you stand with what is right, you have a spiritual connection. You know when you pour libation, you have your ancestors, right? You have the deities, you have God, right? So when you do what is right, you don't worry. You just say, this is the truth. Now you put something to prove me wrong here, and I'm a woman, you're a man, and we say, I'm telling you what happened. But you know what they have. They always have guns, <laughs> you see, but we have God. We have a God and we have spirit, we have deity, and we have a truth. So when you practice the truth, you don't have to ask it. I can barely hear it. So he's saying I read the word of Marcus. Yes, and Marcus Garvey. Yes. And Yea Santiwa, and Queen Azinga, and Queen Hatshepsut. All of those people is us. Still. Yeah. The last question, first one. My last question. All that, all that the uh, white have done to us, our forefathers, uh, very long. And now, how is the compensation for the African? So, is asking, are the white going to compensate the black man? What is the compensation for the black man? The compensation is going to be the black man pulls his own self up. And when the white man says, I bring you something, he says, no, thank you. I don't want nothing from you. I will do it myself. If I can't make it myself, I shouldn't wear it. If I can't make it in this land, I will not buy it from you if it comes from over there. I want to speak on behalf of everybody here and thank you for the initiative and say that um, in the beginning, we didn't know that the reception is going to be this great and amazing. But um, interestingly, that has been the story. And so I'm very grateful to you for um, spending everything that you've spent to come do this. And I think, like you always point to these young ones, it would be remembered that someday we witness something. And that's why we are here in that beautiful future. So thank you and thank you everybody. And then you.